What is the narrow path? What's the narrow path? It's biblical, right? Biblical, physical, anatomical. The narrow path is also supposed to be referring to pineal gland or the physical path that takes you to the opening of the pineal gland, your physical path through space-time. And then the wide path is everything else. <laughs> it's everything that's not the narrow path. So being on this narrow path, if, if it's yours, I don't know if you choose that or not, but uh, being on that narrow path means that your whole life is a constant releasing of Enticements, seductions, um, desires. It's a it's a constant releasing because the narrow path is is outside of all of those. So and then there's not just one narrow path and there's not just one everything else or the highway to hell so to speak i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's that it's that simple even if for instance you're setting a goal for yourself say i'm not going to do something for a week or i am going to do something for a week okay you have set up for yourself a narrow path that's a narrow path. And your only goal during that path is to hold true to whatever you set out to do in the beginning. That's it. You're not worrying about anything else. The whole rest is going to take care of itself anyway. That's actually the best way that we can introduce change into our lives is get one thing. Yeah. You're introducing a mental overlay via a set of words. Take any vice that you have. Probably some of you smoke. I won't smoke for a week. Okay, you're, that's a very profound thing to say if you're a smoker. And being that your smoking is your medication it's your stress stress relief it's your comfort zone if you if you actually set down that narrow path and walk it for a week you will learn a whole lot about yourself in that week if you can walk the narrow path for the week and while you're doing that for that week you don't do anything else you don't you don't go try and achieve all your life goals you don't go try and make a bunch of whole new a whole bunch of friends. You're not trying to find new hobbies. No. You're you are setting that set point around which the whole whirlwind of life is going to go around. It's going to go around that set point. And that's the only spot that you have to be That's the only spot that you have to be uh messing with. <laughs> It's these homeless guys don't know that about traffic signals. So you're taking this one thing, you're just making one set point. It's like a koan. I've said this before as well. It's like a koan. If you're trying to change something in your life, you are literally trying to change the entire universe because you're connected to the entire universe. So the best way to actually accomplish that without going in and trying to change something then seeing all these other things changing surrounding that that are rather trying to change a whole bunch of things and then saying that each one of those small changes has some sort of effect on the environment and the people around you and then you're cast into a whole new world of disarray that is entirely unfamiliar to you. Instead of doing that, you pick one thing. 
Change one thing, one thing at a time. And if you can stick with that for the set amount of time that you did, that you set up, a week or a month or whatever, then once you're done with it, release it completely. As if it never happened. Just let it go and then come back to your present moment and then if you want, add another uh, thing to change after that. That's how you would actually change your life. If you want to change your life. A lot of people don't. But narrow path in general, outside of uh, sort of smaller life goals or habits that you're trying to incorporate for a week or a month. The narrow path is staying true to whatever it is, is your base, is your core, and not letting other uh, influences come in. That's what that means to me. And like for me, my, my base, my core is, is only known to me. It's not known to other people. And I stick to that as best I can. And without expectations that some biblical thing is going to happen, like... I'm going to arrive in utopia after I hold with a narrow path for 80 years without that kind of expectation, without expectation that if if I uh, deconstruct the Bible and find out that it's describing the, the human physical form and that the narrow path is the, the pineal gland decalcification route to enlightenment, that I don't sit there and expect enlightenment. It's always without expectation. And this allows for new... Th this, this actually, this non-expectation aspect of it allows for new feelings, new people, new situations to come into your life. Because if you're sitting there expecting, you're looking back at dead past. It's like you're looking back at a fossil. Everything that you've experienced compared to the eternity of life is a fossil. It's ancient, it's dead, it's not moving anymore. And when you're trying to predict your future or expect your future based on some combination of dead past elements, well, now you just have like a, a carcass that has been chopped up and rearranged and it's just not, it still stinks. So the non-expectation part of it when you're trying to walk a narrow path uh, actually allows for new things, new nuances, new everything to come into your life. And it's, it's counter rational or it's, it's counter logical to think that way because you think, well, if I go on the, the wide path, I'm opening my arms up and I'm asking everything, everybody come in and therefore I'll have new experience. Well, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not how it works. Because you'll get out there on the wide path and you'll find a trinket that catches your interest. You'll find some shiny thing. Some enticement. And then you won't be able to let go of it. You'll be like the, the monkey that reached in for the shiny things in the jar. And then he closed his hand on them, you know. And now he's stuck with his hand in the jar forever because he can't pull it out. It's too big. Anyway, I gotta go. Peace!